our Father, you are a good, good Father. You are the good, good Father. Thank you for your love for us and identifying us by that love, that that's really who we are, those loved by you. Lord, as we sing those words, now we ask you, through your Son, Jesus, to teach us how to pray to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, God's grace and his mercy and his peace be to you from God, the Father, and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Well, I, I kind of hate to admit this as I start off with you guys today, but this month, 40 years ago, and man, that sounds like a long time ago. When you start having anniversaries of things that you remember from 40 years ago, that says something, I guess. 40 years ago this month, I was confirmed. And uh, Pastor Alvin Musgrove, who was also once a pastor here at Memorial Lutheran Church, uh, gave me these words as my confirmation verse. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And then about 16 years later, he restated that verse here at this church when I was ordained. They are simple words, but they say a lot. Of course, when you look at the context of the verse, they say something else in there too. Uh, Jesus, looking back on it, Jesus said these words when his disciples were kind of amazed by the fact that he had just killed a fig tree. Now, he told them that you could do the same. So when I take that and I take the pastor's verse, I'm not sure if Pastor Musgrove was having a bad day with his fig trees when he came up with that verse for me. Um, I don't know if you ever want to get rid of your fig tree, but apparently, according to Pastor Musgrove, give me a call because I can take care of that for you. Um, in that same scripture, it also talks about moving a mountain and uh, that if you have faith, you can move this mountain, put it into the heart of the sea, and it will do that. Now, certainly we want to understand the caveat of what faith is. This is not faith that says, I'm going to get whatever I want. This is faith. This is believing and trusting that God is going to accomplish what he wants to accomplish and that which is best for his kingdom. But as I reflect back on that verse and probably just some of my life experience with prayer, I have to admit that I wish I had listened to Pastor Musgrove a lot better. How many of us wish we listened to our confirmation pastor a little bit better somewhere along the line? I wish I did, and I, I wish I had remembered that verse more and called upon it and used it, um, not just in those years after that, but truthfully, I wish I still did that more frequently than I do. At the same time, I think this verse helps us to maybe get a hold of a little bit of struggle that a lot of us have with prayer, uh, some confusion that we have with it, because it's such a big statement of what we can do about prayer that it makes us think that prayer is this big, huge kind of thing. There's a, there's a certain uh, largeness, a certain formality that goes with prayer. And I experienced that growing up, and, and even early in my ministry, I probably experienced that same thing about prayer. You know, prayer was that which was said by the pastor, because, well, he was the pastor. If you grew up with the old page 5 and 15 liturgy in the Red Hymnal for our old-time Lutherans, perhaps, and those of you who aren't have no clue of what I'm talking about, but just bear with me, and that is, in that order of service, if you look back at it, the people never prayed in that worship service. Even the Lord's Prayer that we're going to be talking about was prayed by the pastor, and the people came in and sang the, the, the conclusion to the prayer at the end. You know, in our house, we said grace, kind of the formality before each meal, or, or you say prayers with your children before they would go to bed. Those things didn't seem so big. But prayers by the pastor, especially those on Sunday morning, those were big. Those were formal. Those were things that 
not everybody could do. And so while I had been taught to pray at the seminary, the reality is I still had a lot to learn about praying personally, about my own personal prayer life. You see, I needed to see a different side of prayer, one that would be beyond just being big, one that would not be a burden, but one that would be accessible. And I, I think I like that word. That's why I'm using it. I, an idea of prayer that it's accessible anytime, anywhere, for anything. Now, fortunately, God has put some people in my life who have taught me and shown me that different side of prayer. And several of you are here today. Okay? You have shown that to me, and I am very grateful. But maybe some of you still have that same struggle with prayer. And if you do, then I want you to know, not just because of, not from just my side of things, but you're not alone. Because it seems, even when we look at the scriptures, that Jesus' disciples struggled a little bit about how to pray. Our gospel today from Luke chapter 11, verse 1, says that Jesus was praying, and, and, and you get the sense that they saw Jesus praying, and they saw something different about the way Jesus prayed, and they wanted to, and they needed to, be taught how to pray. And so that's what we're going to do this summer. During these uh, Sundays in the summer, we are going to learn to pray. More specifically, we're going to learn from Jesus to pray. And here's the thing. If you guys look in the pew, pew in front of you, you see a hymnal, but you also see a, a Bible. Here's the thing. We have everything we need to learn. It's already right there in the pew in front of you, and it's also sitting right up here. Okay? You know what we call it? The Lord's Prayer. And as we take a closer look at the Lord's Prayer over these next several weeks, it is my prayer that it becomes yours, not just in a pew in front of you or in your head, but that it becomes yours right here in your heart. So that prayer becomes more accessible to you. <clears throat> than it has ever before. Now, this Lord's Prayer comes to us in two different parts of Scripture. You heard one of them today from Luke 11. Okay, so a little bit later on in Jesus' ministry, we hear these words from Jesus. But we have also something right at the very beginning of his ministry recorded to us by Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, that Jesus spoke during the Sermon on the Mount. Some people think, well, there's a contradiction. He says to pray this way, and then he pray, pray that way. Uh, there are probably just two different moments in Jesus' ministry, which I think we can all probably appreciate that sometimes we have to be told something more than once to understand it and get it. And so when we look at Matthew 6, we see that Jesus really sets the tone for our prayer life, for a new way of praying, and he does it right away with two words. Those two words are our Father. Now, I don't know, I mean, I, I know we might have memorized that little phrase and the, the explanation to that in the catechism. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I don't know how much you've really ever thought about the significance of those two words. Our Father. When Jesus gives us those words, he gives us a whole different side of prayer. Something that if we were to look at actually at, at rabbinical language uh, before and after, we don't see a lot of it. Jesus gives us something new and different. What he's really doing is giving us the accessible side of prayer. That is not just by the priests in the temple, but is by everyday people, his disciples. In those two words, Jesus gives to us the intimate 
privilege of talking to his Father. And then he also gives us the joy of sharing that prayer and that conversation with others. So those are the two things. But it starts with Father. You know, in today's world, father de fatherhood is taking a very big hit. We even have women who are seeking to have children without fathers intentionally. And the world would laud that. Maybe that shouldn't surprise us when we consider that in our world, and, and I was doing some research on this, and, and I'm not going to go through all the research because it was huge amount, but it was, a, it was a website called Fatherless Generation. And, and in it, it mentioned that 34%, I think it was, over, over a third of children in our country are without their biological father. That's a significant number. And so when we think about those kinds of things, it shouldn't surprise us that today, Father's Day can be a really hard day for folks, and perhaps for some of you. Father's Day is a day that is hard because it, it leaves people, maybe they had a bad relationship with their own father, and so they're hurt, they're, they're angry because of that, or, or maybe it leaves people lamenting the fact that a, a child, that they didn't have a relationship with their father, or maybe it leaves women lamenting the fact that their children don't know their father and their father doesn't want to have anything to do with them. He's absent in their lives. We can understand why today would be a difficult day. But you know, all of the hurt and all of the sorrow that goes with that actually reveals something to us. When we consider all that pain and difficulty that goes around fathers, it shows us that we all have a desire, a natural desire to have a right relationship with our father. Not just the formality of a father, but to have a relationship with an Abba father using the language from Romans chapter 8. To have a relationship with a daddy. One to whom we can go to respectfully, but without fear. One we can go to about anything, anytime. That's what we seek. We look for one who is steady and true and loving. You know, it's the kind of father that Jesus talked about in Luke 11. The scripture we had that a father, if they asked for an egg, you wouldn't give him a scorpion. Or if they asked for a fish, you wouldn't give him a, a serpent. It's the kind of father who wants to give good gifts to his children. But then Jesus says this in verse 13. He says, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who who ask him. You see, more than just material things, and boy, this is a good lesson for us dads, 